after the death of Muhammad, um, Muslim empire proliferated and uh, Muslims created one of the largest and greatest imperial powers uh, in the history of the world. So let me uh, share the screen and let me show you different stages of this proliferation. So here we see the very beginnings. And uh, as you remember, Prophet Muhammad was born in 570, died in 632. And his um, prophetic mission can be divided into two periods, the Meccan period and the Medinan period. The Meccan period lasts from 601 to 622. And then, as you remember, during the Hejira, Muhammad decided to migrate to Medina with a handful of his followers. In Medina, he was accepted as the chief of his tribe, the tribe of the immigrants. He was invited to uh, make peace uh, between several clans uh, in the city. Um, he um, established the constitution of Medina. Um, the two main provisions of this constitution was number one, freedom of religion. Everyone was allowed to retain their religion. And number two, instead of, in, in the case of conflict, in the case of um, some killing that happens by accident, uh, the clans would not start a war, but instead, according to the constitution, should pay the blood money uh, to uh, the party that suffered the loss. So the Medinan period started in 622 and uh, Muhammad lived there for 10 years. He died in 632. So here is what happens um, at the moment of his death. Now he uh, was involved in a series of military expeditions. Uh, from the Muslim perspective, all those wars were defensive wars. From the Western scholarly perspective, these wars were called the uh, Jihad Wars. But however we look at them, by the end of his life, Muhammad was an effective ruler of a significant chunk of Arabia. Uh, look, uh, I'm showing you the part of Arabia that was under Muhammad control by the time of his death. After the death of Muhammad, as I told you, most Muslims uh, believe that he did not appoint his successor. To, so his close companions uh, selected his successor from among themselves. And those successors were called caliphs. So after the Prophet Muhammad, um, a Muslim history distinguishes the second period, which is called the period of the four righteous caliphs. Now, this is the normative period of the Muslim um, history, of the development of the uh, Muslim religion. You know, the mission of the Prophet Muhammad and the period of the four righteous caliphs. Um, <clears throat> why they were called righteous? Simply because after the fourth caliph dies, he was actually murdered. Um, so after uh, the death of the fourth caliph, the political system of Islam radically changes. Uh, during the period of the four righteous caliphs that lasted only for about 30 years. During that period, Islam was not a monarchy and uh, the transition of power was not hereditary. Um, Islam was not a democracy, obviously, but it was uh, some kind of uh, spiritual aristocracy, if I may say, uh, because uh, with some elements of democracy, um, because uh, the transition of power was taking place uh, among the close companions of Muhammad, and those close companions of Muhammad simply voted, selected, their uh, new caliph, new successor from among themselves. So there were some elements 
of election here. And after this person was selected from among a very small group of people, then this person would be presented to the people. And people will, you know, scream, yay. So uh, a process of confirmation, popular confirmation also existed. But of course it was not democratic. But it was neither democratic nor a monarchy. After the fourth caliph, um, political system of Islam radically changes and it becomes a hereditary monarchy. So that will be uh, the next step in the uh, proliferation of the Muslim empire. So what did happen during the four righteous caliphs? The first was Abu Bakr, the second was Umar, the third was Uthman, and the fourth was our Ali, who according to Shia Muslims, should have been the first and only successor of Muhammad, because according to Shia Islam, he was appointed by Muhammad himself. So in those 30 years, uh, these guys were able to conquer the rest of Arabia. Uh, they conquered the Persian Empire. By the way, in those times, there were two major empires in that region. The Persian Empire, if you remember, it was Zoroastrian Empire, and the Byzantine Empire here. The Byzantine Empire was the Eastern Roman Empire. After Rome fell to the barbarians, the Eastern part of the Roman Empire survived as an empire. And um, it, is, it was called the Byzantine Empire, and it survived for one, thousand more years. It was a Christian Orthodox Empire. So um, for the Muslims from the beginning, uh, especially after they conquered the Persian Empire, uh, the second goal was to conquer the Byzantine Empire. So they ex extended their power into Persia, into some parts of Afghanistan, um, here in Armenia, in Armenia and Azerbaijan nowadays, uh, they conquered Syria, they conquered today's Iraq. You see the capital, Baghdad. This is the capital of Syria, Damascus. Most importantly, uh, in terms of religious reasons, they conquered Jerusalem, they conquered uh, Palestine, today's Israel, and uh, Jerusalem would remain in their possession until um, England would be able uh, to um, take possession of it um, after the First World War, so 20th century. Now in North Africa, uh, Muslims conquered Egypt, which would after that become uh, a Muslim country, still is. Uh, they conquered uh, the rest of North Africa, including Libya, for example. And they also were able to conquer Spain, which was a significant threat already to the Kingdom of the Franks, to what will later become Europe. So they actually wanted to conquer Paris. You see this line uh, they were stopped at the battle at the battle of tours and uh, they decided not to move further they retreated and uh, basically retained F spain but um, did not try to conquer europe from this direction what they were trying to do is to conquer europe from this direction they wanted to to conquer the byzantine empire and then from from that um, <clears throat> point they wanted to go further. So look at this empire. Three continents, Spain in Europe, North Africa, Middle East, Arabia, so Asia. Um, so the caliphs, the four righteous caliphs conquered Egypt, Syria, <coughs> Jerusalem, the rest of Arabia, Persia, some parts of Armenia. 
and uh, later uh, when Islam becomes um, a hereditary monarchy they add some portions here green portions and the rest of the Af uh, Africa and Spain let me move on to this dynasty so in 60, 661 a new dynasty well actually the first dynasty arose uh, in Islam and Islam was converted from uh, some kind of uh, aristocratic system of selection of power into a um, hereditary monarchy uh, the only uh, major requirement for any successor to Muhammad who was called the Caliph was that he should be related to the family of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad was huge because uh, he had 11 wives um, in the second part of his life so a lot of uncles aunts nieces etc so many of the governors uh, had a, some kind of connection relation to the family of Muhammad and um, they laid a claim um, not only to their particular part of the caliphate but to the whole of the caliphate so that what ha that what happened when um, the governor of Egypt was able to become the caliph uh, of the united caliphate and started his own dynasty that is known as the Umayyad dynasty the Umayyad dynasty changed Islam's political institution to absolute monarchy and uh, it is the, they, the Umayyads, who created one of the largest single states in world history. So here in um, green, this kind of green. So this is Spain, uh, North Africa, Arabia, Persia, some parts of Afghanistan, are some parts of Armenia and Azerbaijan here, Syria, Iraq, and uh, Jerusalem. Umayyads were ruthless uh, political leaders and their power was based on uh, military conquest not so much on culture and cultural persuasion so the next so therefore they did not last for a long time less than 100 years the next dynasty that came after the Umayyads uh, were called the Abbasids. The Abbasids Caliphate, uh, let me see, begins in 750. This is the new dynasty. And the rulers of the Abbasid Caliphate uh, already were smarter and they promoted expansion not only through military might, but also through trade, arts, and culture. So this period of Islam is known as the Golden Age of Islam. Now, what, here is what happens with Islam later, after the Middle Ages. Another Muslim empire arises, and uh, this is the Ottoman Empire. Unlike the previous two empires, the Umayyad and the Abbasid empires, the, the Ottoman Empire is Muslim, but it is not Arab. That is uh, a crucial difference. The empire begins here in the 1300, and then through several acquisitions here, and later acquisitions in the 14th and the 15th century here. We are talking about Bulgaria, we are talking about Greece, um, and um, right near uh, the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire becomes under a tremendous stress. And the Byzantine Empire um, was under stress also in the Middle Ages because um, the Muslim Empire always wanted to conquer it, to conquer Constantinople, the, the capital city of the Byzantine Empire. But, uh, well, because of that, uh, the uh, Crusades started because uh, Western Christians and the uh, Bishop of Rome, the, po the Catholic Pope, um, responded positively to the plea of the uh, Byzantine Emperor Alexius I and sent 
Western Christians to help um, their Byzantine brothers to defend Byzantium against the Muslim invaders. Now, unfortunately, the Crusades did not achieve much. And uh, one of the side effects of the Crusades was that they actually weakened the Byzantine Empire. So when the Ottoman Turks arise, they finally conquer Constantinople. Uh, this is one of the major uh, dates in Muslim history, 1453. Uh, Turks conquer Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, and after they do that, they uh, already represent a serious threat to the rest of the um, European world. Um, they are expanding. Uh, the expansion is pretty rapid. The golden age um, of the, this Ottoman Empire is taking place in the 16th century when uh, uh, Suleiman the Magnificent, uh, the ruler of this empire, is um, capitalizing on the acquisitions that were made before that. So these are the acquisitions that were made by different Ottoman rulers here and later here and uh, already by the Suleiman here and here. So we have, we are talking about, and here by the way, we are talking about the reconstruction of the uh, great Muslim empire. Uh, this is uh, um, North Africa. They were not able to recapture Spain. Spain becomes uh, or actually returns to Europe, but uh, uh, North Africa is still Muslim. Uh, Arabia, uh, Middle East with Jerusalem, Syria with Damascus, uh, Iraq with the capital of Baghdad, uh, the whole of the Byzantine Empire with the capital of Constantinople, Bulgaria, Greece, um, the former Yugoslavia here, um, Hungary, um, this is Romania, and you, you know, they, they come very close to Vienna, to Austria. A great empire uh, that uh, survives for uh, six centuries until the 20th century. Well, let me finish uh, my narrative with this slide. This empire slowly deteriorates in the 18th and the 19th century because it was not able to modernize itself. And since uh, it was not modernized, many provinces are trying to win independence. Uh, Greece, for example, is one of the countries that uh, becomes independent of the Ottoman Empire. Um, so the Ottomans are trying desperately to modernize in the 19th century. They introduced the parliament, they introduced the Western education system, they introduced freedom of religion, they introduced uh, all uh, secular law, Western law, etc. But um, they are not able to catch up with the West. And after the First World War, after the end of the First World War, this empire is um, divided and basically ceases to exist. And on the ruins of this empire arises modern Turkey. And in 1923, uh, the uh, father of the Turkish nation, Ataturk, proclaims the Turkish Republic. And in 1924, one of the key dates in Muslim history, in 1924, Ataturk gets rid of, eliminates, exterminates uh, the institution of the caliph. So caliphate is no longer, is no more, uh, and is now history. So this is one of the key dates because all Muslim rebels, all Muslim terrorists, all Muslim revolutionaries in the 20th century and now in different parts of the world, in either in the Middle East or in Africa or in Asia, when they um, arise as revolutionaries, their main goal is to reestablish the caliphate. 
the caliphate being um, the traditional organization of power that goes back to Muhammad. Uh, 